Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're taking you to seven of the most haunted restaurants that we have visited here in the Lone Star State. Our first stop on today's spooky food adventure is just north of San Antonio. Now we're here in downtown New Braunfels to go inside of a saloon operating in a building that's been around since the 1800s. They have some reported paranormal activity, plus they're serving up some tasty food. Let's go inside the Phoenix Saloon. Joining me now is Bruce Mayer. He's the general manager out here. Thank you so much for having us. No worries, anytime. Now, this is a great place to come to if you're looking for a great bite in New Braunfels, but you also have some supernatural guests here, right? We, we do. We have some paranormal activity from time to time. Uh, with a building this old, you know, built in 1871 originally, there, there's a little bit of uh, extra guests on occasion, to say the least. They, they hung around for a while, right? For sure, for sure. The party didn't end for those guys. Right. Now, where's most of the activity at? Probably in the basement, I'd have to say, for sure. Of course it's the basement. All right. Well, let's go check it out. i got, I got to see the basement then. Right on. I've met a lot of mediums uh, working here. They, they all come in and tell me different stories, but the last one I met actually told me that I have, uh, I have two followers that, that kind of keep an eye on me uh, while I'm here in the building and uh, hang out for a bit uh, from time to time. So We've had people um, say they've heard laughs from, from different corners of the room down here. Um, I've been down here personally at night when nobody else is in the building and heard footsteps over my head and there's absolutely no one in the building at all. So. Yeah, no. The story that I heard that scares me the most, in the basement over here, it used to be one of those places where they had tunnels where people could escape. Somebody's still there. Somebody's still there. And there's newspapers down there that are from back in the 1940s. They have talked about these figures that move through the places down there. And my son has seen them. What's the weirdest, creepiest thing that anybody's ever reported that you know of since working here? Uh, personally, I've, I've actually heard, heard a voice before, I, I, only in my right ear. Same situation, you know, buildings closed, lights are out, doors are locked. Uh, so we can head back upstairs, check out what you got going on in the menu, because you guys are known for chili, right? Yes, sir. Birthplace of commercial chili powders in this building. Let's go check it out. All right, now we're up here in the main area, and right in front of us, we have all the delicious food that you want to get when you come out here, including the chili. Yes, sir. And uh, the chili, you guys invented the chili powder here? Uh, commercial chili powder was invented here in the early 1900s. That's so cool. Yeah, pretty There's like neat. things, I mean, I grew up here, but I never know like the little history about all the little things going on. Sure. I know this burger right in front of me <laughs> is a monstrosity. Yes, sir. And it has some of the chili uh, here on the burger. Talk to me about what's going on. Well, we've got uh, two half pound patties there, some cheese, some bacon, uh, all the fixings, and a bit of chili on top. The side of sweet potato fries with blue cheese dipping sauce. Ooh. This looks insane. Look at this thing. That's no joke. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. All right, that's the bite. Oh, wow. Now talk to me about what's going on right there. That's our uh, a chili dog with uh, cheese and onions added to it. Uh, Miss Vicky's potato chips that we offer for a side. Uh, I'll be frank, huge bun. Gotta hold it all together and, and keep it in one place. I'm gonna go for it. Actually, you know what? Yeah, you might need a fork and knife for that one. I'm gonna cut it in half. You grab that half. All right, all right. We're gonna get a little crazy, all right? Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's just... The Phoenix Saloon is home to the original location of commercialized chili powder. So when you order the chili, you actually get to taste a little bit of history. That's why I had to try the chili dog out here. Just an original Americana bite right there, right? Loaded up chili on there. Big old dog, man. You're gonna have to eat this thing with a fork and knife. It is super messy. So much good flavor in that chili. It's slightly smoky, it has a little bit of spice to it. Yeah. The dog itself has a really good texture to it. Cheesy, it has a good texture on there. The onion set it over the top too. That is really good. Bruce, man, when you come out to the Phoenix Saloon, so much history, so many things that you can explore when you're walking around, live music, great beers on, I mean, how many beers do you have on tap? Uh, 31 taps. <laughs> 
31 beers on tap. This is where it's at, New Braunfels. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for having Absolutely. us. Absolutely, anytime. Now, slightly uh, haunted, I guess, really haunted, however you want to take it, right? Yeah. You might hear things, you might see things right out here, but I'll tell you what, you'll always remember the food. Cheers. Salud. Today on A Taste of Texas with Schatterbach Beer, we're at Cafe Oleon, the Riverwalk in San Antonio, known for these giant margaritas. Now, they're serving up these Shiner Orale Campechanas, and these drinks are loaded up with tahini, chamoy, shrimp, of course, fruits, and then it's got the umami on there, calamari on the side, more chamoy, more tahini on top, the tamarindo straws, and avocado jalapenos on there as well. They have a variety of popular Tex-Mex and Mexican dishes on the menu as well to try, but you know you gotta go out there, get these Shiner Orale Campechana drinks. They are Top notch, that's the team out there. Scan the QR code on the screen to learn more. Cafe Ole, this is where it's at. Now we're here in Floresville to go inside of a restaurant that has a haunted history, plus, they're serving up some delicious food. Let's go inside Fluff's White House. Tony Gasnow is the owner out here, Chris Trevino. Thank you so much for having us at the restaurant. Thank you, thank you. Now, we're going to look at the menu here in a little bit. You have two burgers and a sandwich that look absolutely incredible. Yeah. But, I mean, this place is haunted, right? Yeah, it's a little spook to it, but who knows. <laughs> <laughs> and now, downstairs is where everybody's dining. But yeah. upstairs is actually where a lot more of the activity happens, right? Um, those walls could talk, man. I'd be there for <laughs> days. <laughs> All right, let's go check it out. All right, let's go. And then we just come right on up. So immediately, right when we walk into this area right here, I mean, the atmosphere just gets, it gets like thicker, it gets heavier. A lot of the paranormal teams that come by say, this is where one of the portals comes through. <laughs> I don't, don't want to sit next to it. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, no, no, no. In the morning, I'm here by myself up front, and I wipe all the tables. Well, I always have my hair out, right, right here, and I feel like someone's trying to, like, put it. I could feel, like, a touch on my ear, like they're trying to put my hair back. You know the history before you got in here? We knew that it was a lodging area, that it was a bar since way back in the early 1900s. This room in particular, I just get a bad vibe from. Like, nothing else gives me bad energy. Oh. I'm not an energy person, <laughs> but this one gives me the bad vibe. Some of the psychics that for the paranormal teams, they said right here, there was just, one of them said all of a sudden their stomach kind of turned when they just came right past here. They're just walking, it's like they hit a wall or something, like there's something in there that's yeah, not right. But um, have, I mean, a shadowy figure, you said that some people have reported that as well, right? Oh uh, yeah, we've seen it too, downstairs, the staff, upstairs, downstairs, there's a, Call it the Shadow Man. Ah, no, we don't. Just pops up out of the <laughs> reflection, and you see him. You're like, there's something right there. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see it, and I'm going home. But we're gonna go back downstairs where it's safe, and uh, let's uh, let's go eat some food. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here at the bar. The food looks absolutely delicious. And starting right here, you have a chicken sandwich, you have a double stack nacho burger, and then a double stack, this is like your house burger, right? Yes, it's a Float Town burger. It's a Float Town burger. I wanna start with this one though. Right here, we have it on Texas toast with our nadga mayo. <laughs> and it derives from our spiciest wing sauce, which is the flaming nargas, which <laughs> be ready, we're not responsible for anything. All right, the Diablo sandwich is a bite. Oh my goodness. Now, if you're feeling extra hungry, you gotta fill it up. This is the one to get. A nacho burger. Yes, sir. That is so wild. And look at all of the cheese just coming off this bad boy. I mean, this thing is steamy hot, and the two patties on there, what are they made out of? Uh, it's all brisket meat that we cut and grind in-house. So not frozen patties, they're right. not pre-made patties. We cut and grind brisket meat in-house, oh season it when we cook it. So <laughs> kind of have to get a grip on that. That is too. a messy burger. <laughs> I like it though, baby. Wow. Wow. Talk to me about what's going on. All right, this one we have two of our brisket patties along with American cheese and Swiss cheese with some bacon. We have grilled onions, grilled jalapenos, grilled mushrooms, 
And to top it all off, we have a fried egg on top oh. and with our homemade mayonnaise that we make in-house. The Flow Town Burger, that's the bite. Absolutely delicious. The fried egg just sends it over the top, plus their house made mayo. I think it's a really good bite, and it's like a quintessential Texas burger bite that you're looking for. The White House Cafe, Fluff's White House, this is where you want to come to when you're in Floresville. It has great history to it. You can get a little ghost tour while you're here as well, but the food is top notch, and it's the reason why you're going to keep coming back as well. Great people out here. Give them some love. Thank you so much thank for you, showing us you. out here. Get the nacho burger. Yeah, nacho <laughs> burger is that. Texas Eats is coming right back after the break. This right here is the pateado plate with chicken and beef and a ribeye taco. This is a giant margarita. And you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And if you're watching at home, scan the QR code to subscribe on YouTube. Now we're gonna go inside the Grey Moss Inn, go on a ghost tour, and we're gonna see how they're making all this delicious food. Let's go check it out. Joining us now is one of the owners here at the Grey Moss Inn, Martha Valadez. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. This place has a lot of haunted history to it and wonderful food. So talk to me about the space itself. When did it open and when did you become a part of it? It opened in 1929. Mary Howell was the original owner. It went to a couple of uh, owners and then unfortunately had to close during the pandemic. So it stayed closed for a couple of years. So the haunted aspect of it didn't scare you away? It scared my sister a little bit. <laughs> I bet it did, yeah. Uh, but uh, not too much for me, not too much for me. Something happened over here recently, right? Something paranormal. Uh, yes, it did, and we actually caught it on our cameras. We had a bartender standing here, and right behind me, you see the glassware in the back? Uh, glass just flew off the shelf for no reason, and it was pretty scary, because as you can see, there is no way that it could get a draft, and uh, yeah, that was a little strange. Okay. I was a little skeptical when they told me, and I was like, no, no way, somebody must have been around, something must have happened, so we had to go back and look on the cameras. And yeah, there is no explanation that I can come up with. Actually, this is primarily where things kind of have happened. This is from all, all the stories that I have heard. So this re restaurant, like I told you, was first opened by Mary Howell, and it is said that it is her spirit. So from what I hear, a lot of people feel her presence. You can't see her if you're looking at her directly, but you kind of sense it in your peripheral vision, and you see the movement on your peripheral vision. Do you see? Uh, you see? You see? Oh. <laughs> Actually, right before we opened, we were still remodeling and we were trying to empty our well tank uh, when we were still in a well, and we left the faucets open to drain the tank. Over here, there was only like four or five of us, and we were talking in the front dining room, and then we said, oh, it's time to go. Can you go close the, close the, the faucet? And we get back there, and the faucets are completely closed. And of course, we thought one of them was playing a joke, but everybody claimed that nope, nobody went back there and the water was closed on its own. So we, we attribute that also to Mary and her, help, and her helpers. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I think we've scared up an appetite. I'm getting hungry. And so you have a whole new menu that you're gonna be showing off for us and I'm super excited. Yes. We need to go hang out at the patio. Yes. And I probably need a drink now. <laughs> now we're at the outside dining area and right in front of us, Y'all really just blew me away. I mean, everything just looks so delicious. Every, I think every cuisine has some form of Milanesa. Um, and ours is, uh, um, th this is a Milanesa, and it's what's special about it is that we make it with filet mignon, mm. whereas traditionally it's made with sirloin steak. Now, if you're feeling extra hungry, body out of the plate. Yes, that's uh, traditional fajitas. Uh, so right here we have chicken and beef, and uh, of course it comes with rice, and you can't have fajitas without borracho beans. So tender, so much flavor. Now, I mean, the seasoning process cooked on the fire, you know there's just a ton of all that juiciness that gets locked in, and you can really taste it when you're taking a bite. And that pepper's pretty hot. Now on this table, because it's not just one table, y'all, 
You have the queso flameado. And a beautiful chorizo in there, the flavor, the cheese, everything melted and melded together. And you pull up on it and you get that beautiful cheese pull. I mean, how popular is that one? Very, very popular. From what I understand, guests love it because we have plenty of chorizo, homemade chorizo. And, uh, you know, with that queso, it's it's just really, really good. And of course, with homemade tortillas. I was going to say, you also, you have the corn and you have the flour, homemade. And that's a huge indicator that y'all know what you're doing in here. <laughs> you gotta have good tortillas. Right? You do. You know? Enchiladas, and you also have ribeye tacos. If you had to pick one of these that you would try right, right now, what would you go for? I'd definitely go for the ribeye tacos. Ooh! You have the fresh tortillas on the inside. The ribeye meat is just grilled right there. And then you have avocado, cilantro, cheese on there. And another serrano. Cheers to you. Okay, here we you, go. You guys, the Grey Moss Inn, new menu. This is where it's at. Come get a little spooky tails, eat some great food, and just relax with the whole family. All right, and that's the tacos. All right. Outstanding. Oh, oh, my goodness. Texas Eats is coming right back after the break. Now we're here at the Jordan Ford dealership and joining us today is General Manager Casey Ogletree. Casey, thank you so much for having us. Thanks for coming. Now right behind us is one of the most popular electric vehicles on the market. Talk to us about this Mustang. This is a Mustang Mach-E. This is the one that is giving Tesla a run for its money and we are proud of it. The fit and finish of it, you'll be blown away. Not only that, the government's gotten involved. 10,000 in savings on these things. You could save $10,000. 10,000. That is absolutely incredible. If you want to get inside an electric vehicle today, find out more information by going to the website, www.jordanford.com or just come out here to the dealership. I got to give this thing a spin. You do. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Austin to go inside of one of the city's oldest taverns that has a haunted history. Plus, they have some tasty pub grub. Let's go inside the tavern. Joining us now, special events director out here, Marcus Sims. Thank you so much for having us here. Oh, thanks for being. Now, this place, it's a restaurant. You can come sit at the bar, but it also has a really cool ghost story, right? Yeah, absolutely. The building was erected in 1916. Oh, wow. So a lot of history <laughs> yeah. here, a lot that's, of history. That's pretty old, yeah. You got, you got a long time on there. Now, where does most of the haunting activity happen in the building? So most of it takes place upstairs. So on our way upstairs, yeah. more of the haunting situation happens up here. <laughs> uh, then we also have the next level where yeah. it gets even more scary. The building was erected in 1916. Uh, it was called Enfield's Grocery Store. It turned into a bar um, and then Prohibition came and it was a brothel. Uh, then after that, it kind of came back into being a bar. There were some situations, there was murders here. So oh, wow. I mean, this place has some real, real ghost history. Now there's one murder though that's like more infamous than the others, right? Sure, sure. Talk to me about that. So there was a young woman named Emily who worked here. Uh, she had a child and she lived upstairs on the third floor. We found her body in a crawl space upstairs. No, no, like you guys did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold like, on, but, like so real, it was just Like there. real ghost stories. Oh, yes, no. Sir. Yeah. Oh, so no. she was crumpled up in the corner. We found a pair of her shoes, which we also have on display here. TVs will turn on and off sometimes and nobody's touched it. Um, you know, for me personally, when I'm here by myself, I'll be up in the office and we have to walk past the area where we found her body. So that for me is a little like, I can, <laughs> I can like feel it. So this- Was it right here? It was in this crawl space. Oh no, <laughs> don't, so I don't want to be next to You're the closest it. one next to it. Yeah, her. I'm good bro. So prepare yourself. Oh look, the door's uh, so moving. So they found her here. I swear the door's moving, you see Dude, that? it just did. Yeah, I'm telling it you. It just <laughs> did, it just did. Yeah. That right there was like, no done for TV sort of situation. <laughs> there was no movie magic. That was legitimately that door was yeah. wobbling by itself, and there's literally no reason for that. To and happen. you've never so experienced that, that before. So yes, so that freaked me out. That was a, <laughs> that was a genuine reaction. Our, our final spot on the ghost tour sure. up here on the third floor in the attic. I mean, 
It is creepy. It's creepy. I don't know how y'all work up here. This is strange. (laughs) And every night you walk out of here and you stare at that door on your way down, just praying that nobody jumps out of there. Oh, yeah. No, I would have nailed that thing shut already. Oh, yeah. We probably should. But thank you so much for giving us the ghost tour. So much history here. Creepy vibes. For sure. But we're going to go back downstairs to the first floor. And we were going to actually try two different burgers and some house specialty wings yes. that you got here at the tavern. I'm excited for that. All let's right, get out let's of here. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> right in front of us, some of the delicious tavern items that you have on the menu. This one, though, right in front of me, that's over the top, man. That's a little over the top, <laughs> yeah. Talk I, to me I, about this right here. Okay, so that is our cheddar blanket burger. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's it's just like our tavern burger, you know, very simple, um, you know, lettuce, pickle, onion, tomato. Yeah. Uh, but clearly, a ton <laughs> of cheddar cheese. Yeah, you know, that is. If that you is just insane. if you just want the extra heart attack, you can go in with the with the uh, all stat beer battered onion rings. Oh yeah, but check this out. I have an idea. Okay. I mean, we got? this stuff. Everything out here is just wild. Sure. I'm gonna fold this cheese. Whoa. Okay. You now that? that's next level. Right, I haven't yeah. seen this done before. Oh, <laughs> here he goes. That's here he goes. The, pie, the cheddar blanket burger out here at the tavern. And I folded First it in. First time ever. First time ever. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Here, Here we go. go. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's smart. smart. Now this one is the Emily's Ghost Burger, right? Correct. This is the one. This is the one that's named for her. On this burger, we've got, you know, standard gourmet ranch patty with uh, poblano peppers, corn relish and some uh, Monterey Jack cheese. Nice. Also has this spicy uh, Emily ghost pepper sauce on there as well. <laughs> That's the bite. So these are the Tavern White Wings. Uh, this is just kind of like a playful twist on a boneless chicken wing. So we start with uh, chicken breasts, we chop them up and then we will uh, put a little slice of jalapeno in there, fresh jalapeno, Ooh. and then also wrap them in bacon, toss them in buffalo sauce. Hey. Thank you so much for having us out here. Cheers to you, you guys. The tavern here hey. in Austin. Absolutely. Is it haunted? It gets a yes. Seal of approval. This place is creepy. If you're into that kind of thing, Absolutely. come out here, get the tour, enjoy yourself. Don't go on the third floor because it'll just yeah. it'll haunt you. Thank you. Oh, that's delicious. Texas Eats will be right back. located minutes from the Riverwalk and steps away from the Alamo, the historic Manger Hotel reigns as the oldest continuously operating hotel west of the Mississippi. Joining us now is Lee Marshall. He is a tour guide with Sisters Grimm. Thank you so much for having us here at the Manger. Thanks for having me. Now we're gonna go on a tour inside the space here, inside this gorgeous hotel. Yes. And you're gonna take us to three destinations that you've selected that have the most activity, a high chance of us seeing a ghost. Now, <laughs> so we're gonna start at the lobby. Yes. I'm super excited because you said there's a lot of activity there. Oh, yes, a lot. All right, let's go check it out. Let's do it. Over many years, many people have died in this hotel and they tend to want to do their little peacock strut around these balconies here and uh, we see them all the time. I mean, how many people do you think died in the hotel? Oh, it's, it's going to be countless. Really? I mean, really countless. Oh. And not just the hotel itself, but what was standing here before the hotel was. Right. Which was the battleground for the Alamo. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can only imagine. I mean. All right, Lisa, now we're on the second floor, and right behind us is the King Ranch Suite. Why is this an important spot to visit? Uh, it's a very haunted spot to visit. <laughs> That's why it's important. Okay, good. <laughs> but what, what makes it haunted? Like, why is it haunted? Captain Richard King died here. Oh, well, there you go. You already got one in there. Oh, there was a lady we interviewed that she was sleeping. She woke up. She said it was about midnight. When she woke up, she said, I felt like I was being watched. Her response was basically, sir, I paid for the suite. I'm trying to sleep. You need to leave. <laughs> and she rolled back over and went back to sleep. You get to have a piece of history here when you're going to sleep, when you're walking around. Yeah. There's, it's basically like a museum inside of the hotel itself. Yeah. Hey, I'm getting thirsty, though. So you want to go to the bar? Oh, yes, let's do it. <laughs> A while back, it was about three months ago, two ladies who were staying here were here in the bar, seated right there, 
and one of them picked up their phone, took a photo of their reflection in the mirror behind the bar. When they looked at their photo, there's more than just two ladies there. There's actually a little girl standing between them. I have a photo to prove it. Lee, thank you so much for the tour. I really appreciate it. Well, I will see you on the other side. Other side? What do you mean? <laughs> Lee? <laughs> Lee! David, who are you talking to? Lee, he was standing right here. He gave us a tour. You're alone, sir. <laughs> Joining us now is executive chef Joe Garcia. Joe, thank you so much for having us in the restaurant. Thank you. And you brought out all the heavy hitters out here on the menu. And I wanna start right here with right in front of us. You have the mango ice cream and it is very popular. Talk to me about this and why is it popular? The mango ice cream goes way, way back to where we had mango trees mm -hmm. and the chefs back then started making desserts from the uh, mangoes. So mango trees were here. You guys just were like, all the chefs that were here were like, let's start making something with them. And then the ice cream just kind of happened. It and sells. that's made fresh in-house? In-house. Wow. Daily. 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 Wow. All right, cheers to you, chef. There we go. That is phenomenal. Delicious. I can tell why this is so popular. All right, what about the Reuben sandwich? This thing looks loaded up. Okay, we use, of course, the rye bread. We use the fresh corned beef, Swiss cheese. We make our own Thousand Island dressing, served with the fries, of course, and the pickle spear. Now we're gonna go in the kitchen. You're gonna show us how to make one of these dishes from start to finish. What are you gonna make for us? Sure, I'm gonna make you the uh, ribeye. All right, cheers again. Mango ice cream is where it's at. I'm gonna eat the whole thing. All right, let's go make a ribeye. First thing you want to make sure is that your ribeye is at room temperature to get the correct temperature on the steak itself. And that is just to make sure that your cooking method is going to come out the way you want it. We're going to season it with some salt and pepper on both sides. Very good. Now you want to put some oil into the pan. That's uh, extra virgin olive oil. A fresh thyme, fresh rosemary. Now you want to add a little bit of garlic. There for just a couple minutes. Give it a flip. Oh, look at that beautiful crust on there right now. <laughs> Chef, you ever seen any ghosts or paranormal stuff in the kitchen? Uh, I have. But you're still here. You're still working here. Uh, I'm still here, yeah. <laughs> I guess a friendly ghost. The colonial room here at the Manger Hotel is serving up some phenomenal bites, truly a hidden gem in the city. If you're looking for a great spot for lunch, a great spot for brunch on the weekends, that's the bite. We make a great team, Chef. That's delicious. Don't go anywhere. There's more Texas Eats coming up right after the break. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're gonna go inside one of the oldest buildings in downtown Austin that has a haunted history, plus they're serving up some delicious Southern comfort food. Let's go inside Moonshot. Joining us now is Joe Wynn. Thank you so much for having us out here, brother. Now, this restaurant is one of the oldest spots in downtown Austin. That's right. And it also has some haunted history to it, right? Just a little bit. <laughs> you just said that now, got goosebumps. Like my hairs are literally sticking up right now. Is there a particular hot spot in the restaurant that people really notice, like spirits and activity? Oh, absolutely. I think one of them is where we're standing right now. <laughs> um, this actually used to be a lower table with uh, a four uh, top section here and two top section here. And uh, guests reported to us multiple times uh, to the management team that our staff kept coming by and tapping them on the shoulder. Oh. And it wasn't just one guest, it wasn't just two, it was multiple guests that report the same thing over and over and over. Right. And we'd look at the camera system and we're like, there's nobody going by there tapping you on the shoulder. It was the oddest thing. But the particular one we we're talking about was actually a young girl. Um, there's a tree that we have on our veranda that she was swinging on. And there was a well that's actually still there um, that she was swinging on and supposedly fell into that well and uh, passed away. Um, so her spirit continues to live on around this restaurant. <laughs> that's, that's just spooky though, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, she seems playful enough. 
It's a shoulder tapping kind of ghost. So this is the last standing Sunday house in the city of Boston. It was built in the 1850s. Um, <laughs> so is that a guy? <laughs> no, oh, that was somebody else. Okay, uh, I thought I was like, oh man, what'd you bring me in? I know, right? Uh, one day we were closing down the restaurant. This was locked. Nobody had been here for a couple of hours. I notice a, a circle of chairs at the center of this room. Like right where we're standing. Right where we're standing. Now, we're getting a taste of the top items on the menu. Right in front of us now, we have all the delicious food coming out of the kitchen. These are like the top items on the menu. And right here, you got a burger that's just loaded. I mean, is that like pimento cheese that's in there? Oh yeah, that's a uh, secret pimento cheese that we make. Um, a big old burger patty, eight ounce burger patty, uh, a bun from uh, one of our friends or some of our friends in Slodo in Houston as well. You know what? We're gonna cut this burger in half. Look, Look at the inside of that, cooked to a beautiful medium rare medium. And then you have the pickles. You have a really delicious oh, pimento cheese on there. Right. I know, it's super juicy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Now this is a rack of ribs, and how is it prepared? Now we actually smoke the ribs for about five to six hours, and then we throw it on the grill, and then toss it in a apple, or Dr. Pepper apple barbecue sauce. Oh wow, now look at this, super tender. All but look at this. Bones. Oh my god, look how, that's where it's at. Really? All right, you know what, here. Steaming hot. You gotta get one. It's a St. Louis baby back ribs, sauce on the side, a little tobacco onions right there. You already dipped it in your sauce. <laughs> I'm gonna dip it in the sauce that comes on the side. That's the bite. Oh, oh, wow. Can't get any better than that, y'all. Oh, wow. Mm. Now, we're gonna jump over here. Chicken and waffles. This is like a Southern classic, right? Oh, absolutely. It's uh, one of our most popular dishes here. Chicken. That's the waffle. <laughs> Join get me it. here, come get on. It, baby. We're right. hungry, baby. All we're right. going. Cheers. Cheers. Bye, the chicken and waffles. Cornbread waffles and fried chicken. Put them together, syrup, a little bit of spicy gravy as well. Absolutely delicious. And when you make a little sandwich out of them, you take that bite, I mean, there's really nothing better. You guys, Moonshine here near downtown Austin. You can come out here and enjoy yourself with great food, bourbons, whiskeys, a whole selection. I mean, you guys have one of the largest selections in the city, if not the state. Plus, who knows, you might run into a spirit while you're drinking some spirits, right? Amen. Cheers. Cheers. All right, gotta try this one. Ready? That's the one. That's how you finish the meal. More Texas Eats coming up right after the break. Celebrate fall with a cup of award-winning Circle K coffee. Get them hot or iced for the same great price. Plus, when you're at Circle K, you can grab a Polar Pop, a Froster, or an iced coffee one a day for only $9.99 a month. It is a fantastic deal. Get them hot or iced for the same great price. Joining us now is Trip Cardiff. He is the museum educator here at the SAMA. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, of course, welcome. Now, this building is pretty old. It's been around since the late 1800s and it was a brewery before it was anything else, right? That's right, yeah. This is the old Lone Star Brewery and like you said, it's been around since the late 1800s. Around the Prohibition and the First World War, they fell on hard times and they closed not too long after. It was an abandoned building until it was renovated in the early 1980s to be a museum. There's a lot of different areas of the museum that people have experienced maybe some uh, paranormal stuff, right? That's right. We're gonna head first to our Egyptian gallery. Let's go check it out. <laughs> now we're here in the Egyptian gallery and there's so many cool things here to come experience with the whole family. But what we're gonna be looking at right now is a coffin panel. Um, this one is special because it depicts the goddess Isis. Now where it gets kind of spooky is that we've had our security guards when they're 
closing up at night. Uh, they're walking down this, this hallway that's right here. And, and as, they, as they walk away, some of them swear that they hear the pitter-patter of, of a, a child's bare feet running across the stone floor. It's a, it's a, that'd be terrifying. If I heard that, I, you would hear my feet walking out the door. That's what you would hear. <laughs> and you're gonna be sharing some more stories, so where are we going next? So we're gonna head up the elevator to our Japanese gallery. All right, Trip. now we're inside the Japanese gallery, and you're gonna be mm -hmm. showing us an object you said has like a ghost on it, right? It does, yeah. It's this little piece uh, right here. This is actually a traditional man's wallet. On it is, is very delicately painted this sort of emaciated, like necrotic green ghost figure. They're called yure in Japanese. So a former security guard, she was making her rounds. She was walking through and heard footsteps behind her, figured maybe it was like another, another guard coming up. She turns around and there's no one there, but she feels whoo, this cold breeze like wash over her and she's sort of frozen for a moment and then right over her shoulder she hears a voice very quietly but clearly say get out <laughs> you know so let's go let's get out of here let's get <laughs> And how That's do people right. find out more information about it? Yeah, them? if you want to find out more, just head to samuseum.org. Uh, go to our events calendar. Like you said, we have events all, all year long. We've got family programs. We've got uh, tours for adults. Trip, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Of course, anytime. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Earlier on the show, we went on a haunted ghost tour at the iconic San Antonio Museum of Art. Now, we're going to go grab some bites at a Tuscan Italian-inspired restaurant serving up some fantastic menu options. Let's go inside Tre Trattoria. Joining us now is executive sous chef Chris Ortiz. Chris, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming out. Now, you brought out the hits off the menu. We're talking desserts, appetizers, entrees, pizzas. We even have some cocktails, a glass of wine out here, which I'm super excited about. And you have some different dishes here that I'm going to start with in the front. So that is our deviled eggs. They're soft boiled eggs, and then it has QP mail on top of the egg. Then we put a little bit of truffle oil topped off with shaved Parmesan and salt and pepper. That's a flavor oh. bomb. You didn't prepare me for that one. This has got to be a crowd favorite, right? Popular dishes as well it is um, the brada. We have basil oil on the bottom uh, with our pear mustarda. On top, we have the uh, blood orange gastrique, um, candied pepitas, the brada, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and then our garlic toast. Look how beautiful that is on the inside. And you have two desserts in front of us. Talk about each one. First, we'll start off with our uh, Nutella ganache and then uh, Nutella chantilly. This is our lemon ricotta cake with our blueberry jam. It has berries on side, which is blueberry, raspberry, and blackberries, topped off with our nougat, a little bit of powdered sugar, and our vanilla chantilly as well. Now we're gonna go into the kitchen. You're gonna cook a dish for us from start to finish. What are you gonna cook for us today? Uh, we'll start off with the uh, radiatory. So once we get our pan out, we'll get our uh, butter. We'll let it brown. We'll toss these onions in. After about a minute or so, we'll toss in our roasted cauliflower. Then okay. we'll add a little um, charred lemon. Then we'll go ahead and drop in our radiatory, which is our fresh made pasta. All right, chef, so now the pasta is ready, out of the water, we're gonna throw it right into the pan, right? Okay. And then we'll get our smoked gouda sauce. Trey Trattoria, you guys, gorgeous restaurant located right on the Riverwalk here at the San Antonio Museum of Art. Cheers to you. Mm. This is where it's at. Thank you so much for watching today's haunted episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information and a map on all the restaurants that you've seen on today's show, just go to our website, TexasEatsTV.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Texas Eats TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning and 11 o'clock at night right here on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas Eats. Hungry for more Texas Eats? Be the first to check out our exclusive content by searching Texas Eats on YouTube. Plus, get notifications when we upload new content by subscribing to our channel. We're showcasing the best bites from across the Lone Star State, including burgers, pizza, barbecue, and tacos. Search for Texas Eats, subscribe to our channel, and watch Texas Eats anytime on YouTube.